Well, today we're at the Monticello furnace, or what's left of the Monticello furnace. We have a retaining wall up on the hillside. When I read this is the Armstrong Trail, whenever the uh, rail line came through here, extended up through here, basically the furnace is right in front. So the furnace was disassembled. I guess by that time the furnace was no longer in use. So this furnace, Monticello, was uh, went into blast 1859. You would want to forge that into wrought iron. Wrought iron is what they would have made tools out of. So again, here's a nice placard. They did a nice job. I mean, not every furnace is, you know, is remembered as well as this is, but you can kind of look through here. They said the later extension of the railroad is covering where the where the, the stack would have been. So again, retaining wall. They would have put the charcoal layers of charcoal down through here, heated through the bellows. This would have made it, uh, this would be molten, and then they would basically pour from this side. That's where this clay plug would be. So here's basically the molten cast iron. So they put this in layers, and then as it melted, it would basically drip down inside here, this being around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Whenever they pulled this plug, all that molten iron would have just come out. So again, good visualization. Not much left of this one, but at least there's a plaque here to remember it. Um, I try to do the ones in, Pen in Pennsylvania. So we have Brady's Bend. There's a couple up here in Brady's Bend. Monticello Furnace. There's a couple down here in Catanning. We just went through. So we'll try to document some of these. Uh, Richard Parks had done a good job of uh, documenting these furnaces based on a book that was put out in around 1969. I can't remember the two gentlemen's name, but he put a web page together. He's since passed along. But he left in his legacy were uh, the GPS coordinates for all these furnaces. So he did his in like 2002, 2003. So I'm trying to capture some of these and put them on YouTube for future generations so people can see what these look like. Again, this wall is bowing. I'm not sure how much longer this retaining wall is going to be here. I don't know that there's any need for them really to, uh, to keep this thing up. So they'll probably just let this cave in go into disrepair. What happens on a lot of these furnaces is you see how big these stones are you know, 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds or something. They could use as a uh, the base of a, a farm, you know, a barn. It could be used as a base of a, a bridge, so people would come take these. Or, you know, townships would take these, and that would be the, the bottom of a bridge or something, since these stones are all nice and cut. So this wasn't something cheap to do. I mean, the guys that did this were doctors, you know, very expensive, um, you know, sometimes military men, very, a lot of money went in this, so you know, maybe $100,000 back then, but uh, they made quite a fortune with cast iron. And then, you know, mid-1800s, 1890s you know, and things like that, then all the cast iron stuff was starting to be localized in Pittsburgh at the big blast furnaces, and he sort of went out of business. Really no use for these at that point. But at least there's a little bit of history left of this. They have a plaque. Once this retaining wall is gone, I'm sure the plaque will still be there. Not much more to this one. You get a chance on the Allegheny Trail, on the Allegheny River. Stop and take a look at this one.